This has led to those Warframes getting changes. Buffs, if you're a Chroma player, buffs that he has actually wanted or bloody needed for years now. So, rewalk when, Pablo? So, last week in Warframe was a bit of an emotional whirlwind, right? A tragedy of nerves, which caused easily one of the biggest uproars in the Warframe community that I've seen in a very long time. In fact, can any of you remember the last time there was that much anger directed at a change? However, Digit Extremes have adjusted Dante's Dark Verse, his Page Flight, his Tragedy, Nasia's Divine Retribution, the Arca Titron's Slam Capacity, they've made quality of life changes to Overguard and Line of Sight in general for a lot of abilities with last night's hotfix. So let's get right into it, shall we? Dante's Dark Verse. Now they've made its line of sight checks more reliable, syncing it up with the improvements already made to Tragedy a few days ago. If you've been scratching your head over enemies barely peeking out and not getting hit, then this tweak is going to fix that for you. His page flight has had its stasis damage returned, which was initially a bug, but players liked it so much that it's back and actually it's stronger than before. At maximum rank, we're talking a 50% stasis damage increase, which scales, of course, with your power strength making Page Flight a really good ability now. Now his Tragedy, with great power comes a damage cap. Given Page Flight's buff, Tragedy now has a damage cap of 1 billion. This is the highest damage cap in game, and I've added it apparently to stop it breaking or crashing the game. When it combos with Page Flight, it deals a lot of damage, and this kind of shows you just how powerful Dante actually is. He has got serious range on his Dark Verse and Tragedy, and with the new line of sight fixes, he is in a much better place than he was after the nerfs last week. In saying that, line of sight in general in Warframe still has issues with certain tile sets with some of the environments. But Dante, like I said, is in a much better place than what he was last week. But let me know in the comment section below what you think of these changes. Which brings us to Nasia, the Warframe who arguably got the biggest nerf last week. His Divine Retribution augment suffered a 50% range nerf which was something like a 75% area of coverage nerf. This meant that sacrificing a mod slot out of your current Nasia build for this augment wasn't really appealing. They've now given it a base range of 14 meters, which scales with range mods. Overall, this is a 27% range nerf as opposed to the original 50% nerf on that range, which is much better than it was. Like I said, I originally said on my stream, 25 to 30% of a nerf would have been understandable, but 50 was overkill. This means that mine, when nerfed originally, only had a 20 meter range. Now it has a 33 meter range. Typical. So it's back closer to where it was before and sacrificing a mod slot now for this augment is definitely an option, whereas before it wasn't really. Again, share your thoughts on the Nasia changes in the comment section below. Now, part of the reason for Dante's nerf last week was that he was too generous with giving overguard to everyone. Even the grumpy Warframes who didn't want it, Chroma, Nidus, and Inneros. Overguard it then stopped the builds for those Warframes from functioning as they should. This has led to those frames indirectly getting changes or buffs if you're a Chroma player. Buffs that he's bloody wanted or needed for feckin' years now. In fact, as someone who has one or two Chroma videos on his channel, I would say rework when, Pablo? The community basically wants their bad dragon. Vex armor buffs were blocked by Overguard. Dante shone a big old light on this issue, so they've gone and changed it. Now Overguard doesn't block Chroma from getting those juicy buffs. Melee and ranged kills will buff your Vex armor and weapon damage respectively, making Chroma a self-sustaining powerhouse. He will get 15% of an armor increase from melee kills when Vex armor is active, and he will also get 15% weapon damage increase from ranged kills so 30%, I think they said, if it's a weak spot kill. Again, Chroma has needed a buff like this for a very, very long time. Vex armor being reliant on taking damage in order to increase your damage was a massive pain in the arse, whereas now you can increase that damage yourself, whether you want to do it via melee kills or whether you want to do it via ranged kills. Like I said, 15% of an armor increase if you run around with your melee weapon when Vex armor is active, or up to 30% of a range increase if you have your Vex armor active. So, Chroma players rejoice. Now, they've also changed how Rage and Hunter Adrenaline, both of those mods, will function, because Overguard was also blocking those mods from allowing Warframes to regenerate energy. So, with the changes, Rage and Hunter Adrenaline can now convert the damage on Overguard granted by teammates to energy while shields are inactive, so your shields have to be inactive. 
The big thing here is also granted by allies. So the mods will trigger when the last source of overguard, which you got from an ally, it dissipates or goes away. So this allows shieldless warframes like Inneros and Nidus to be able to regenerate energy via these mods when they would um, have previously been blocked by overguard granted by teammates like Dante, like Frost, like Steinax. Here is the exact stat details that they give on the patch notes. Rage will give you plus 40% of damage on overguard granted by teammates to energy while shields are inactive and hunter adrenaline will give 45 percent this same effect has also been carried over to necromech mods like necromech rage and kinetic diversion so all of those mods are now in a much better place than they were before frost's icy avalanche augment mod which is the augment mod which grants overguard for every enemy hit by avalanche now gives that overguard to non-players so your sentinels companions and so on this brings us up to the line of sight checks that Dante received last week and how they have now also been added to this list of Warframes on screen which will buff them in a roundabout way because their abilities will now function better and not be obstructed by environment as easily. From Excalibur's Blind and Umbra's Howl to Hildren's Pillage, Korra's Whipclaw right down to Corvex's Chirinka. Hello. That pillage one is definitely looking good. Now the new line of sight checks will scan three times compared to the one scan that it originally did. It will now scan for enemies head, torso and feet. So if as much as a toe is visible, then that enemy will pass the line of sight checks. But they're not stopping there. They also plan on working on Embo, Jaya, Voban and Zephyr in a future line of sight update to make sure that they're in line with the list of Warframes that I've just shown as well. Now, I know over the last week, Line of Sight has definitely been a hot topic, and I think that's maybe a topic that deserves an entire video in and of itself, because a lot of the community believe that Line of Sight is just a really crap mechanic and doesn't belong in the game, and then there's other people who believe that it does, or else abilities, I guess, are going to get out of hand, and you're going to be able to nuke way too much. But like I said, I think that's a topic that deserves a video of itself. So feel free to share your thoughts on Line of Sight in general in the comment section below. Now, another change in this week's hotfix is the Arca Titron Titron, also seen in Earth last week following the slam damage buff that melee weapons received with the Dante Unbound update. I never got to try this, but I believe it was an absolute monster. I've seen plenty of footage of it nuking entire rooms. So they nerfed it last week, but they went a little bit too heavy handed. They made it underpowered and now they are, I guess, reverting some of that nerf to bring it back in line or they're trying to find I guess a, a middle ground so more they've reduced its maximum rank from 10 down to 5 so that we can hit max rank with the capacitor charges much easier on that buff and deal more damage more frequently now its damage per charge is now increased by 250 percent instead of 100 which gives you more overall damage when you hit 1250 percent at max charge They've doubled its range per charge, but they've kept the overall range pretty much the same. So it's not back to the room nuke that it originally was last week, but it is better than what it was when they nerfed it last week. But that's pretty much the meat of this week's hotfix. I've tried to keep the video as short as possible, but there was a lot of information to go through. Let me know what you liked the sound of or didn't in the comment section below. Have a great day, and as always, thanks for watching.